I think what we're seeing around artificial intelligence is a lot of excitement, quite rightly, uh, about what it can do to transform the organisation and automate things which had previously d been done by humans. I think our counsel would be to stop and think before you kind of launch into a series of point solutions. You know, what we've seen in the world of analytics is that those kind of point solutions have ended up with a very kind of pockmarked landscape, a very poorly integratable landscape and you know we can see those same problems arising in the future if organisations just jump as I say headlong into what they're trying to do with AI. What's important for organisations who are venturing into the world of AI is to have a framework within which that works. So thinking about the overarching operating model, how this technology is going to interact with people, what capabilities you need where across the organisation and frankly how it's going to integrate with existing processes and existing teams. A lot of the language at the moment around AI is that it's going to take people's jobs or it's going to do away with the need for you know, huge swathes of the population's work. And frankly, you're going to need people to buy into these new technologies if they're going to be successful in the organisation. So understanding how they're going to interact with people, understanding that broader framework so that you don't end up with a series of point solutions is really critical. Uh, machine learning has been around for a very long time, the, however we have seen quite a few significant changes and that's that before it was very hypothetical uh, and done in a research lab without real data and nowadays there's a huge amounts of data to, to really test and improve these algorithms on. So unstructured data is, is really where, really the topic of the moment and that's, that's largely down to deep learning. So in the last few years what we've seen is advancements in neural networks that allow for unstructured data to be modeled from a machine learning perspective much, much better. So in terms of audio and visio, there's been huge breakthroughs in image recognition, in language processing, in voice to text, uh, amongst others. Machine learning has three areas uh, that are, are key. One is supervised learning, one is unsupervised learning, and the last is reinforcement learning. I think traditionally we've seen companies very much focused in supervised learning, which is where you know the value you're trying to predict. So a typical example would be demand forecasting, where you're using weather data, uh, previous customer data, amongst others, to predict the demand. Uh, unsupervised learning is slightly different. It's when you don't know what you're looking for and you're just trying to find a pattern in your data. So there might be, this might be a customer segmentation, for instance, where you're trying to identify what are the different groupings of customers. This, here you don't know what groups of customers you're looking for, but you let the algorithm do the work for you. And the last area is reinforcement learning, which is where you don't actually have the data to do the learning, which is a slightly weird concept. But an example of this could be a hoover that cleans your home. And this hoover cannot be trained to clean a specific home because it's never been in that specific home. So you teach it to teach itself. And, and that area has actually been booming in the last few years and we expect we'll have quite a few interesting implications for businesses in the next uh, five to ten years. The, the key advantage of deep learning to the more traditional techniques is it can it has much more layers of abstraction and that means it can find structure in unstructured data. So when it comes to trying to understand audio or video, deep learning is a very powerful technique that has opened a lot of doors in the last few years. When implementing artificial intelligence, I think you have three broad options. One is to go for first principles, another one is to go after open source, and another one is to use software packages. For the likes of Google and these companies that really aim to have a competitive advantage through their algorithms, I think first principles make sense, but for the vast, vast majority of companies that doesn't, is probably not the right way forward, and a combination of open source and software vendors is quite is the way forward and I think where the software vendors stand out is that, that you can implement them very quickly you don't need the same level of talent within your organization and they provide very much point solutions whilst the power of open source is it gives you much more control over what you're doing and the ability to manage this govern it uh, and roll it out in a much a much more sustainable way and build this into the fabrics of your company I think starting open source is actually an excellent place for a company trying to implement artificial intelligence and, and a reason for that is that the technology vendors uh, or the, the technology stack is moving so quickly that 
locking yourself down into specific suppliers is actually quite bad and it actually introduces a lag. So most of the know-how is relatively open um, and it can be found in open source. As a company trying to develop and implement artificial intelligence, I think the open source route is much better than the software one with a few exceptions where you might look for a software point solution. The fact that the landscape is moving incredibly quickly, so whatever you go and implement today is probably going to be out of date tomorrow. And in that sense, it's key to be very agile here. A few key differences are the volumes of data you're dealing with in, in, more, in artificial intelligence and the type of data which is unstructured. So it will require a slightly different platform configuration um, and more importantly from an operating model perspective what you'll have is governance of the data being absolutely key because if you are taking actions on microsecond levels or second levels a human doesn't have the ability to intervene as quickly and it, it could cause damage. There's a data quality uh, layer that becomes much, much more critical uh, because the algorithm might not be able to use the same level of human judgment today when the data's wrong. Um, and then there's a lot of software integration challenges that you'll face uh, as with an analytics project.